Hi there and welcome to Bust the Net. Yes, this is the show I like to call the Staley Bridge Diaries. And I've just come back home from a short break. Um, my wife decided to arrange a little trip to some snow. Uh, brought my kids uh, down a, a few slopes. Was trying to teach them how to uh, go snow sledding. It's a lot of fun. I, th I guess I'm getting a bit too old for some of this shit, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, well, there's a lot of s there's, there's a lot of sunburn in the family. Uh, yeah, nobody seemed to believe me when I told them you can get um, you can get dehydrated and sunburn um, in s when you are out in you know playing in snow. But never mind. Uh, here we are. It's uh, the Daily Bridge Diaries, and today I'm gonna we're gonna be doing a quick catch up i mean i'm very happy because i just came back i played this game against burton and we won to one i mean this follows the show against i think we played bolton here then we drew one one now burton to one i'm really happy with this result because uh um yeah we were we're playing okay and then the ass man comes out and tells me billy lacy is not playing a very good game it was very error, error ridden so i decided okay for once i'm going to listen to the ass man and i did i took billy lacy off put in louis young and guess what we the score was one one the substitution change was a miracle and uh he dropped in a cross and we went on to beat burton uh to one with dan cockline breaking his uh duck he hasn't scored for a while right um Sorry, duck is a term we use in cricket. But uh, he's drought. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So he scored his two goals and he scored early and he scored late. So he didn't score anything in between. But we're very happy. Uh, but what I'm going to do on today's show is slightly different because I've been reading some of the comments and uh, I'm going to explain a lot of the logic behind how I create tactics, right? Now, first things first. Uh mentality means jack shit to me okay the only thing i care about when i look at mentality is uh the effect it has on my players so here we've got a lot we got mentality why do i i, I hardly ever come off positive right so i don't play cautious i don't play any of the low mentalities not because they're a bad idea but because it's not my style of play i like dynamic uh football even if i'm counter-attacking if i want to have a counter-attacking style of play i prefer having a positive mentality now does it does it mean that you have to play count? Uh, does it mean that counter attacking can only be played on positive? No, counter attacking can be played on any mentality because the the fact is it's uh, how much risk do you want to take with your counter attacking flow of football? Counter attacking largely happens as a result of your roles and duties. So here, if you look at my team, I've got two defensive midfielders. So, but just looking at the formation alone, it'll tell you that I I I want to sit back, right? I want to draw teams in with a lower line of engagement. But I don't want my players to be so close to the goal, our goal line. I, I want to have a high defensive line when we have the ball. So I want them further up the pitch when we have the ball. So that when we're attacking them, we're not so deep. Uh, so much so that there's a lot of ground for us to cover. So because of the higher defensive line, I play with an offside trap. So that's the security that I play. So I, I kind of squish the feel of play. Now... With two D, with two DMs as well, you you tend to you can play with a higher defensive line. I, you don't want to be too deep anyway because the deeper you are, the more you draw teams. I mean, the more you sitting back and inviting pressure. Now that's fine, but you're already inviting pressure playing a four to two DM because there's nobody in this big space here. So the team is always going to control the pitch. So if you're like when you when I play counter-attacking systems, I'm looking more at the roles and duties. So here I've got a wing-back. Why have I gone with a wing-back? He's more attacking in orientation than a full-back. And it makes sense because there's, in front of him, there's a DM. Now, DM is not going to move very much. He's going to be static. He's going to hold this position. So the wing-back is going to come up the pitch and he's going to help support the inverted winger. Now, the inverted winger doesn't really have anybody else supporting him except for an F9. So we got an F9 dropping in. So the two guys up here are going to create most of the chances between themselves. The F9 and the target man. F9, well, he has got a lot of work to do on his own. And uh, the, our first goal, which was scored in the second minute against uh, that team called uh, Burton, featured an assist from the F9. So here we go. The blow played the ball to Lacey. Lacey, as you can see, the movement of the players here we got inverted winger here. we got the F9 here. We've got a target man here. We've got one more winger here. We've got the DMs here. So the, the, this, this is the winger. He plays a long ball up to the F9. F9 goes off on his own and then he drops in across for the target man. 
target man scores. A very simple, effective football. And the reason why I'm cho- I chose positive mentality is so that I can get those kind of transitions, those fast transitions. Um, because you, you can get fast transitions with the, on any mentality. Let me be clear about that. But the thing is that when I play on higher mentalities, I'm asking my players to take more risks. With more risks, there's a likelihood that they're going to look further, f- they're going to look forward for the first pass. If I play on a lower mentality, then they're more likely to play cautious football and then they won't look forward for the pass. They might look sideways for the pass. I don't want sideways. I want forward. So that's why I, cho- that's why I like to choose um, a positive mentality for counter-attacking style of football where my goal is to get the ball up the pitch quickly, not sideways quickly. I mean, I'm not looking at, you know, is this a good opportunity to play the ball forward? No, I'm not so sure. Let's pass it to the midfielder. Okay, and we pass the ball. It's a good opportunity to play the ball forward. I'm not so sure. Let's pass it to the other guy. Now, that's not my... I, I hate that kind of football. So, and then I've got these two strange instructions that I have, I've never used before, but I'm using them this year. Last year, I was not a big fan of using them. I mean, I still am not a big fan of using them, but it's really the only way you can influence the mentality of the fullbacks without changing their roles. So here I've got a fullback on support. I have him taking Furious Dripple, Lewski, Sid Narrower, but his mentality is attacking. Now, if I had within a positive mentality, now, if I had not done that overlap shout, then his mentality would be positive. So now he's on a higher mentality as well. This guy's on a higher men- this guy's also on a higher mentality, attacking, because he's on a higher mentality. So we've got this inverted winger is going to be cutting this way if he was on the, with the right foot. But I want him playing this way, so he's going to work with this F9. Then i got this Volante who's going to be pushing forward. And i got this wing on attack who's always going to be looking forward. And we've got F9 and target man over here. And uh, we're using hit early crosses, which is what you saw early, that, that blows little cross. That was an early cross. Then we play at a higher tempo as well. So I want my players to get the ball up quickly, uh, hitting early crosses. Uh, we play with a counter count. Now, this these two instructions, I always tell people, this has got to do with just whether you're defensive or, f- or offensive. If you're defensive, regroup. If you're offensive, counter press. If you're defensive, counter. If you're off, sorry, if you're defensive, hold shape. If you're offensive, counter. Although you can, you can be, um, you can consider both of these things to be neutral actually, because it doesn't really matter. You can be a, you can opt to hold shape, which is more like. Uh, if you want to hold on to a lead and you're not willing to commit everybody forward, then yeah, whole shape is a good instruction to use. Uh, then we got higher defensive line and I'm using this as a shape, uh, my defensive shape so that I can draw people in and hit them on the break. So this is basically how we're going to be setting up. Uh, we are now playing against Bilirike, oh, money backs Bilirike. Positive structure. What, who, this, team is, this team is not doing very well. We're fourth in the table. We are three points behind automatic promotions. Possibly, you don't want to screw things up. Bilirike, well, they've had they they had a they have a bit of a rocky road at the moment. They on a they on a bit of a streak that needs to they want to step out of. But they are playing with a Trequatista and a target man. Now, I actually like this combination. This is one of my favorite combinations. It's a very dangerous combination because target man holds up the ball on support, right? Trecotista just comes from behind <laughs> does all kinds of wonderful things with the ball. Very, very annoying player to pick up. And he won't be doing any, he'll be finding space and be basically a nuisance. We've got inverted winger coming this way, ball winning deep line foot, complete wing back go, who might, even, they might even have the overlap instruction who might be further up the pitch. So they could end up playing a two for uh, a two, two in, uh, two in defense and one, two, three, four, Four in midfield and five in midfield the Trequatista and these three in attack. So two, this is gonna be a very dangerous team to face coming up. We are gonna have quite a challenging match against Pilariki. But we got a slight issue with some of our players. They're not one hundred percent uh Cockerline who just scored two goals in the last game. He's now injured. <laughs> Picked up an injury in warm up, I think. <laughs> I went on holiday mode. That's my problem. I, I tend to go on holiday mode in between matches. So I I don't really pay much attention to what's going on. So he probably picked up a knock and I'm now paying the 
I'm now having to pay the price. Okay, so here we are. We're kicking off and the, ball, the match is away. I'll speed things up. Burn to Charles. Charles back to Collins to Young. This is going to be interesting because Bilirike are playing with two wing backs. So it's going to be interesting to see how much space their wing backs get. Cook. Yeah, they're actually attacking us quite a fair bit. McCormick to Pickering. Pick, blocked by Wall. And blocked by the defense. Picked up by Wall. Good work from the defenders. Lewis again. McCormick. Pickering again. We defend. But we can't get the ball out. Ah, uh, it's a free kick. And it's a penalty. No, he's offside. Again, here we are. Having to defend. It's a corner. Great work from the boys. Glendon with the corner drifts it in. Yates picks up the pieces. This is uh, we we. I'm really hoping that we can come out of this demand more. There's nothing else I can do. Um. Lewis Wall does well. Hasi Spridey sits it down. Nope, he's offside. I don't really have a target man to hold up the ball, and Jake Jakey Charles is just playing in that position, uh, because I'm too lazy to change roles. Young picks it up, Spridey's, Healy, back to Spridey's, does well. The F9, Wall now, lifts it, Charles, what a take from Charles, oh. Oh no, into the wall, Thompson. Earlier I was beaten by a free kick from way outside the box. Pickering in the, in the match uh, against Burton. Okay, he's just defending now. Hargraves, Lewis to Charles Cook. Okay, we might want to. I might want to change systems. McCormick is wild. We might have to drop one player into the AM hole because um, I might need the extra support. Charles Cook, the McCormick out to Lewis. It's uh, defended well. Okay, we managed to survive the first half. One playing very well. So where's Ultra Woman? Okay, Ultra Woman is here. We got Charles. It's essentially the same system. Uh, we go to the um, team talk. Throw a boot at the boys. And then get on with the match. Wells out to Young. Young finds Hargraves. Hargraves to Healy. Out. Oh, he goes to Wall. And it's a free kick. It's only warned, but this is freaky from Hussey. It's burnt haters just wide. Well, the extra man is certainly making a difference. Uh, we haven't attacked them this much in the whole game. As now, highlights are showing us attacking them for a change. Yeah, and good work. Oh, no. Pickering, get out to Wakefield. This is a swift counter-attack, but the boys defend this. Spridey is now with the ball. Ah, he's brought now. He can't get away. But so far, he's looking quite good. I see with a free kick. Ooh, just wide. Okay. But still, 0-0. Zero, zero. It's not a bad result. Shoins out to Pickering. Pickering brings the ball away. It's going to be a corner. <laughs> Come on, boys. Glendon. It's cleared by the boys again. We're doing okay, but we're not. I'm not. In, but okay, we've done, done a lot better. We're doing a lot better than we were playing in the first. <laughs> Let's play a bit better, boys. Come on. Walker. Done. They defend. They're defending quite well. Uh, I'm not reacting to how they're playing. That's the problem. Uh, tactically, well, the best thing I can do is now play pass into space. Um, I'm going to go wide. I'm going to go a bit more direct. And be a bit more expressive. Well, I want to go down the flanks a bit more. Hopefully there's space to exploit. Spridey's crosses the Healy. Healy's short block. Pickering comes away with the ball. Wakefield crossing it. Yates takes it down well. It's a free kick into the wall. Spridey's again. What a Smart play from him. He gets away. He gets into the box. It's not going to be our day. 10 minutes to go. I'm making Healy play after a viral attack. 
I'm not much of a coach, am I? Good blocks. Defensive. Quick counter. It's wall. It's wall. That's what we want to see. When we get the ball, get out, get out quickly. Corner taken. It. It's back to Hargraves. Hargraves puts it back into the box. It's Collins again. Oh, they're reading it. That's Luke Garbert. A very familiar name on the pitch. Glendon cleared. There's only a few more minutes left on the clock. I was hoping for another win over Bilirike, but I don't think that's going to happen today. But at least we changed things around. Um, after that, um, we were being owned in the first half, but at least second half, there's a lot of difference. There's a bit of difference in the way we were playing. <coughs> we could have had the win, but it wasn't to be our day. Well, sometimes these kind of things happen in the game. And well, Bilirike have managed to slow uh, the ascent of Staley Bridge. Staley Bridge stay stuck chasing that leading pack of Sheffield Wednesday, Birmingham and Barry. Well, if I'm looking at the last uh, last 20 matches that I've played, uh, we haven't... I'm a bit worried at how we're playing because we've given like 20 clear-cut chances away inside the box. Right, they've created 24 against us and scored 20. While we've only created 21 and scored 16. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really paying attention to all these stats at the moment because I haven't got... I, I just want to play and get this season done with and this could be my downfall. Uh, I'm just playing the game. I, I'm not being... I'm not looking at every single match anymore. I'm not looking at every single goal anymore. I just want to play the game and... Uh, Hope that we do okay. I mean, this system seems to be working all right. I mean, could I change it? Of course I could. I mean, I could go, I could play another system. I'm toying with the idea of playing another system so that I make it even harder for the AI to score against me. But to be perfectly honest, I'm lazy. I just want to play. I mean, like, this makes sense. This makes sense. This is, it's worked so far. And uh, we've had some good results. I mean, it's not been perfect. It could be better. <laughs> I'm just uh, winging it at the moment. And hopefully, uh, I get my act together with a few more matches to go. I mean, I probably will start coming up with a plan coming close to Barry because um, now I'm just like, you know, I'm just coasting along. Uh, we're pacing ourselves. We're in a marathon. We're not in a sprint. There's still time to catch the group on top. We're within, we're within um, touching reach of the the leading pack. We can kiss Sheffield Wednesday goodbye. There's no chance of catching catch Sheffield Wednesday. They're gonna win. They got they they're 58 points, man. They haven't they haven't relinquished this spot for a long time. Whereas the rest of the teams like Birmingham, yeah, Birmingham can be caught. Uh, Barry Ipswich Town. I mean, I'm definitely not gonna allow Ipswich Town to get finish ahead of us but this is going to be a race between us and Ipswich Town why Ipswich Town because one of my good friends is a fan of Ipswich Town so we have to catch Ipswich Town and I'm hoping that we do well um, tactically I might want to change something for the match against Bradford City I haven't really decided what it's going to be there's a part of me that says let's go to the 4-2-3-1 I actually have a 4-2-3-1 in the bank waiting it's a wide target man system 4-2-3-1 with an inverted wing back on defense, with the option for me to unleash this guy. It's a very attacking, very, um, I won't call it, it's a very um, mollable system because uh, it rests on Cockline playing very well on the right flank. But the reason why I don't use this system is because I've got this guy, Cameron Hargraves, who is playing quite well. Uh, he's created four, he's basically the source of 10 goals for us. Right, so that makes him, a, this makes him a very important player. And uh, as long as Cameron Hargraves is playing, we can't really play with the system. So I'm left with playing this system where Cameron Hargraves can be utilized. So this system is designed with this play in mind. Yep, this is going to be a very interesting season because I'm very, very stubborn. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Staley Bridge Diaries. If you have any questions, please look me up on Twitter at Bustanet or addicted to fm.com, my website. Once again, I want to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this channel. You make this kind of show possible for the rest of the community. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.